Next up, we are going to work on a game over reset mechanic. Ultimately, what that means is there should be a game over state if the snake is moving outside of the window or overlaps with itself. If either of those conditions are met, then we want to restart in the origin position. Also, we only want to start moving the snake if there's user input. So by default, when the game starts, the snake should not be moving. For this part, I want to start with an exercise. I want you guys to check if the snake is overlapping with itself or if it moved outside of the window. Pause the video now and see if you can figure this one out. Back in the code, let's get started by checking the game over state. And this I want to do inside of the collision method. Because ultimately what we want to do is check a collision between the snake and the outside bits or the snake with itself. At the moment we only have the apple, but besides that I also want to have, let's call it a game over state. The entirety of the game over logic we can cover in a single if statement. Although this if statement is going to have a few parts. First of all, we want to check if the snake collides with itself. This we can do with if self.snake.body and important, we only want to get the first item, which would be the hat, meaning if this hat is in self.snake.body and we only want to check the body from index 1 all the way to the end. If that is the case, we know the snake has collided with the rest of the body, so we can for now print def. Let's try that one. And first of all, I have to collect a couple of items. Let me speed this one up. Okay, definitely enough elements now. So let's try to overlap and there we get def. So this is working perfectly fine. This covers the first bit. We now know if the snake overlaps with itself. Besides that, we also want to check if the head of the snake is moving outside of the window. And we only really ever care about the head of the snake because this is the only part that really moves. And basically what we want to check is if the snake is outside of a certain range, which we can do with not zero is smaller or equal than self.snake.body, the first item, the head, and on there we only care about X. And this one has to be smaller than the calls. The calls or the columns we are getting from the settings. If the snake head is anywhere outside of the range, we want to end the game. Let's try this one. And now I just have to move further to the right and we should be getting deaf. So this one is working fine. Now for readability, I am going to add a slash so I can put the entirety of the code over multiple lines. That makes all of this a bit more readable. There's one more condition that we have to add, which would be not zero is smaller or equal than self.snake.body zero, except now we want to look at y. And this one has to be smaller than the rows. And those would be all of the conditions. Let's try this one. And we are getting def on this axis. We're getting def on this axis. And we're getting def there as well. Cool. So this seems to be working just fine. And if all of that is the case, we don't want to print def. Instead, we want to call self.snake.reset, which does not exist right now. So inside of snake.py, we have to create it. Define reset without any custom parameters. And now we have to think about what we want to do in here. Most importantly, we want to update the body, or rather, we want to reset the body to this original state. And well, for that, all we really have to do is to copy the line, and then we get to the starting point again. So this one, fairly straightforward. On top of that, we also want to update the direction, or rather, reset the direction to what it was in the beginning. That way, the snake doesn't keep the direction from the last bit of the game, which could be left, which would feel kind of weird. Once we have that, let's try. And now I can get one apple and go to die. And there we go, the game starts again. And let's try it again. And now if I go outside, we are restarting the game once again. So that looks pretty good. The last thing we now have to cover is that I don't want to start the game right away. Instead, it should only start once the player is pressing anything on the keyboard. To cover that part inside of Thunder init, under the timer, we can add self.game underscore active, which by default should be false. 
And then inside of the run method, and we don't need collision anymore, we want to check for keyboard input inside of this for loop, which we can do with another if statement. If event.type is equal to pygame.key down. If that if statement triggers, we know there's some kind of keyboard input. Although this we only want to do if another condition is also true, and that is that self.gameActive is not true. So not self.gameActive, only then do we want to check this condition. If it is met, we want to set self.gameActive to true. And then once the game ends, so we have a collision, we want to set self.gameActive back to false. So far, this game active is not going to do very much simply because we are not using it inside of a relevant if statement. But that we can change quite easily because we only want to update the snake if this condition is true. Meaning we only want to call self.snake.update if we have an update event and self.gameActive. And now, if I run the game. By default, nothing is happening, but if I press up, for example, then the snake starts to move in that direction. And let me go to game over state. Now the snake stopped moving and I can press down and the snake moves just fine. Let's try one more time. And now if I press left, well, we are moving to the right because that's the default value, but that is still working just fine. So I am happy with all of that. Perfect, that covers another bit.